Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 23rd, 2017 edition of the Science and Storm Center Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad wrote up a nice piece about new ransomware that uh, he was running across, and uh, it identifies itself as Sage 2.0. The emails distributing the ransomware are done uh, pretty simple, no subject line, so should be easy to spot, but it makes it more likely that the victim opens the attachment by naming the attachment uh, using the victim's name. Once opened, the malware downloader then uses the usual tricks uh, to get the victim to enable macros by stating that either the Word document was created in an earlier version of Word, and to view it, the victim has to enable editing. And in another version, it uses the rules where the document claims to be encrypted, and again, enabling editing is supposedly then going to help you read the document. Content security policy, or CSP for short, is one way how websites can make exploiting cross-site scripting flaws a lot more difficult. But deploying a meaningful content security policy is difficult. GitHub has been publishing some blog posts about its CSP implementation and just published another one with some of the CSP features they are using now to prevent actually also bypassing of CSP, at least to prevent some of the more common techniques, how this is done. So if you're interested in deploying CSP, I would highly recommend uh, this blog post, but also some of the earlier ones that GitHub published because they really go into some detail what features they're sort of using in CSP, in particular for a large website like GitHub, of course. They had to be a little bit careful in how they implement it. And uh, for example, they do include some of the content from their own Amazon cloud servers and such. And so how they made that a little bit uh, easier uh, to filter uh, with a CSP. Researchers found a rather odd set of 350,000 Twitter bots uh, who up to now only tweeted Star Wars quotes. These uh, tweets are sometimes decorated with random hashtags uh, to appear more normal. The bots do add location data to their tweets the coordinate map to random locations in Europe and North America. So with that, they're trying to fit in a little bit better with normal tweets. It's not clear from the article what's the purpose of the botnet, but it could be as simple as spam. The individual bots do only have a couple of followers at this point and do not retweet or tweet content that would attract large number of followers. The main focus does appear to be just to build out that network. And the researchers in this paper, what they're looking into is how can you detect large Twitter botnets like that? And in this case, aside from the Star Wars quotes, which are sort of a giveaway, they're also looking, for example, at the geolocation coordinates that are being used. They're more random than what you have from a normal Twitter user. And yet again, Symantec has been caught signing unauthorized certificates. There does not appear to be any malicious intent, uh, but the action by Symantec, and actually not Symantec itself so much, but companies that Symantec assigns signing certificates to, are again illustrating the problem uh, with certificate authorities. One of the domains that were issued certificates for are example.com, then also a couple of variations of test.com. Now example.com is reserved by IANA and test.com appears to be a valid domain name. It's used not much uh, there right now. Now certificate transparency logs uh, help discovering uh, these uh, rogue certificates but ultimately controls at the certificate authority like Symantec have to be improved in order to solve this fundamental trust issue with certificate authorities. Symantec confirmed that one of its partners issued the certificates 
and that this partner's privileges to issue certificates were reduced as a result. The, the certificates are also now revoked. And in a couple of weeks, uh, Alan, at Mike, Santi and uh, I, we will be at uh, RSA again for our annual panel. Uh, this year, RSA actually gave us a keynote spot. So we should finally have a large room for everybody to be able uh, to attend. Uh, this is also the time of the year where we have the Social Security Blog Award again, and I would appreciate uh, your vote. Uh, you will find the URL for the ballot in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.